Okay. Evan and I are here to go through our summer of presentation. Um, you'll notice two links at the bottom of the presentation. This presentation is going to be posted on the Academic Advising website that you have bling with. Yes. Uh, and uh, that should be posted uh, tomorrow at the latest. I just hadn't gotten around to getting it posted after I, after I got it re-edited. Um, but if you go to the Murray State website and search Summer O, the Summer O schedule will come up, the itinerary and everything that the students have. The more we know about what, they're, what they know, the more we can help to make them comfortable. Right. Because, and that is a big part of Summer O. Our biggest part is about academic advising is getting them registered, yeah. uh, but making them comfortable is important too. Are you going to be, will you be registering students? Or will uh, you just be? Maybe just a few. I don't okay. think there'll be many. Yeah. yeah. Probably just. Most of probably them will go with their academic programs. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. And the academic advising website, of course, is there. I will continually refer you back to that. We'll continue to keep that uh, website up to date, information both for you and for your students. Um, it is a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the summer of schedule, um, because you are with. Uh, special student populations, you're probably going to be at all of these. <laughs> yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, think, yeah. uh, um, I don't think I'm going on the 22nd, but. Oh, that's right. The, with the honors, you may not be. Um, else, yeah. so. um, but th this is the schedule for all of them. The last session has been moved twice, and now I believe it is on the second. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go through the schedule for these in a minute. The transfer orientations are going to be on the same days that the, as the regular ones. The only one, the 22nd, will not have a transfer orientation. And new student advising will be at 1045 for each of these, except for the honors and the transfers. And they will be in the afternoon. The honors session is on a Friday. And the 1045 advising was virtually impossible for all of us who go to school. Um, yeah. And so we moved that to the afternoon for the honors okay. session. Yeah. yeah. Um, the academic advising website, as I said, um, your students, all of our students in their summer O bags are going to receive a pen that has the academic advising website URL on it. And they're also going to receive a pamphlet that gives them basic instructions on how to read a racer. So if you do want to have them using their racers as they're registering, um, they can do that. I have my students open up, they, I have them log in, and then I have them open up two separate tabs, one for their racer and one for their MyGate Academics tab, where it has the add and drop classes. Okay, yeah. And so that they can be looking at their racer and seeing what's needed. And so it ends up being a tutorial on how to read the mm -hmm. racer okay, while yeah. they're doing it. You will find that more and more of your students already know how to use their racer before they get there. Really? As okay. soon as they're admitted, they're given a racer. Okay. Um, and so, okay. and then as they're, uh, for example, if they have dual credit courses coming in, those will immediately populate onto the racer, and so okay. you can ask them, is that course you're taking already on your racer? You know, yep. you got the grade for it, it was a fall semester course, it should already be on there. If it isn't on there, can you get your transcript up on your phone or on the computer? And that way we can schedule with whatever courses they've already taken. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But do remind students to go to the Academic Advising website. I've got this in the um, presentation in about three places, and I just realized last week when I did this presentation, I forgot to mention it each time. Make sure when your students leave you that they have contact information for somebody who is available during the summer. In mm -hmm. your office, that's not a big deal because right. your office works the whole time. Um, me, for example, I'm not in my office over the summer, so I make sure that they have my card with my email address on it. Um, I have colleagues who will be overseas who are academic yeah. advisors. They make sure to have their chair or their dean, somebody who will be here. Okay, um, and so make sure that they do, because a lot of them are like me. They'll come up with questions after yeah. summer is over. Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. And I'll, I'll talk a little more about that as we, as we work forward. Um, what you need before uh, summer O, um, either look at their racers, or if you have an academic plan for your academic unit, for your program, have that ready. Um, and you can even put together sample schedules. The schedule of classes has been out for several weeks now. They're doing a better and better job of getting that out well before academic advising. So you can look at the kind of classes that your students would take 
and look at what sections are available. This will get more and more hairy as we get into July and August yeah. okay. as classes are filling up. On the other hand, last year um, English 105 and COM 161 never did fill. Hmm. Even for the last summer, oh, there were still seats in those. Um, and so that's, things, are, things are getting better on that front. Um, your student test scores. Uh, VZ is the software we use for students who are registering for Summer O. That VZ form, um, it's a log on that you'll have and you can see what their, which, which session they're coming to and what their scores are. Okay. If you need VZ access, I think um, yeah, um, probably email Mallory LaPlante, okay. and it's M-L-A-P-L-A-N-T um, at murraystate.edu, and she will get you VZ access so that you can see that. Um, okay. The uh, updated scores will be loaded to Canvas on the day of Summer O, that morning, when we see who actually shows up. Okay. And, read, and uh, admissions will load those. Um, you know, and so if you if you you should be able to go to the racer um, on MyGate. Also, if you go to uh, MyGate and search for the student's name, you'll find test scores there as well. Okay. And so that'll help you with that. Um, know what the university studies and area and major requirements are for students in your program. Know what prerequisites they're going to need. The more pre-planning you can do, so that they come in and you say, "Great, let's see, we need to get you into these classes." the more smoothly it will go. Is, are the prerequisites listed like somehow on the racer as um, well, or is that just through the They are not listed schedule? for the racer. Um, usually what you have to do is look at the courses they need to take. Um, yeah. With your students, all of them are going to be in different majors. Yeah. Um, so you'll, you'll need to have them looking at the course descriptions. Okay. In racer, remember that they can click on a course number and the course description will pop up. Okay. And they can read the course description that's where the prereqs will be. Okay. Um, for most of your students, when they meet with their advisors for their programs, their advisors and their programs will know, you know, okay, you're going to need Math 135, let's see where you are, yeah. you know, what will you need to get there. You need to choose Psych 180 as one of your university studies requirements yeah. because you need it for the major too. Okay. That kind of thing. So usually it's the program people who know what the prereqs are. Yeah, all right. um, this will get easier as we get the plans feature on to MyGate. I mean, uh, Andre Racer, which should be sometime next fall. I've been telling you that for two years. <laughs> so I feel like a liar at this point. Um, but we are getting to the point where every program should have a plan, both loaded on their website, a generic plan for their students, which will list prereqs, and it will be loaded on the Racer, too. Yeah. So we're getting there, little by little. There's also something floating around our office. It says, yeah. it's even got a little mug in the corner. It's called Academic Advising Act Worksheet. Uh -huh. Yes. Is, yes. Is that on? I can't find it anywhere on Margate, but it says Margate on it. But it's for not, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if the worksheet is. is actually on Margate anymore. Okay. Uh, it is in their summer O booklet. Okay. You know, and so that they'll have a worksheet with them as well. Gotcha. Um, there used to be a template for it on Margate, and I'm not even sure if it's linked anymore. Yeah, yeah. there might be one. There's somebody printed off in our office. That just, yeah, it yeah. may be. It may be under the academics tab, and we can take a look at that. Okay. Yeah, as we're working awesome. through. Uh, placement and testing information. Uh, for your students, some of them may want to do challenge testing. Um, uh, on the Summer O site, there is a really good link for testing, telling you when the testing is the day before and the day of Summer O, uh, and also which offices to contact for different kinds of challenge testing. Okay. And so that's a good thing to know about. Placement charts are on your MyGate Teaching Advising tab. Uh, if you look on the left-hand side, you'll just see them listed as placement charts and placement information. Um, AP equivalencies, if you go to the uh, Murray State website and just put AP equivalencies, or in any browser, put Murray State AP equivalencies, oh, okay. the chart will show up. It's also linked on this slideshow, which I'm going to post on, on the advising website. Okay. Yeah, cool. And then CLEP equivalencies. Uh, CLEP and other testing are done through the testing center. Most of the testing that's on the Summer O site is done through the Lowry Center, okay. through what used to be called the Community College, even go. though we're not allowed to have one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that information is there. Um, some programs have a lot of their students do placement testing in order to uh, advance. Uh, other programs, 
it, their students come in with their requirements and so they'll get used to that pretty quickly. But with your office, some of that challenge testing, particularly with, your, uh, with the students in your program, some of that challenge testing may be very helpful yes. because they may not have done well in a course, but they might test well. Right. Or they might test well in a different environment. Yep. It may be sometimes ACT testing mm -hmm. is different from um, a challenge test where they'll be able to move forward with okay. that. Um, and I would recommend, uh, you know, it might be worth your while to talk to Shauna Mullins. She's the one over in the Lowry Center um, okay. who yeah. does a lot of the testing. Uh, as, you're, as you develop those questions about challenge testing that are beyond what I can answer as a generalist, okay. she may be able to answer more okay. of them. Yeah, cool. she's a great resource. Awesome. Yeah. Modern languages. Uh, any student who's in a Bachelor of Arts program uh, needs to complete one language through the 202 level. The two courses that count for the Bachelor of Arts on university studies are 201 and 202. Okay. Any student who has had language background before, if they've taken even one semester or one year of language, they need to take the placement test. Uh, the, language, the Modern Languages program frequently has students who say, oh, I didn't really learn enough in four years of Spanish. I'll just yeah, go sure. into 101. Okay. Uh, and it's wasting their time and money. And with the new tuition model, uh, this makes a bigger difference. Um, it also makes it difficult for the instructors because these students get very bored in a 101 class yeah. if they need to be in a 102 or a 201. Yeah. And so do push them. It is, I think, a $10 fee to take the placement okay. test. It is instant. It's one of those things they can log on. Uh, it's on the Summer O site. They can log on, take the placement test, and pay the credit card fee. I will say from my experience, having them do it the day of Summer O is not effective <laughs> because they're stressed out. Um, I had one who took it the day of Summer O and placed into 101, then went home, brushed up, and took it like a week later and placed into 201. Yeah. And we just moved the students. So uh, yeah. encourage them if they haven't taken the placement, maybe to register for 101, but then say, hey, go bone up, yeah. take this, and see where you place. If you place above, drop this one, add that one. Good tool. Yeah. yeah, that's a good tool. Good. But do encourage, you know, if they've had any language background. One other thing to point out, if students come in from another institution uh -huh. uh, and have language credit for a language we don't offer at Murray State. Uh, yeah. uh, like, uh, you know, uh, like Arabic, uh, like Italian. Um, we, they, those courses can translate in, uh, transfer in, I'm sorry, as MLA 201-202, Modern Languages 201-202. Talk to the Transfer Center about that. Okay. So if you see a student who has advanced Italian on their schedule, or advanced, I had a student, for example, who had had four years of Korean. Um, and and the two of them were, they had taken 200 level courses at a college. Um, we were able to bring that in as MLA 201 and 202 and count it to the language awesome. requirement. Yeah. Um, to give you a good idea of what your student's schedules look like, I'm just going to run through these kind of quickly. The okay. Summer O itinerary, these are on the Summer O website, but the honor students, this is what they'll see. Okay, um, all of the students Summer O's will look alike uh, in terms of the opening session. The 915 session, this is new this year. It's a Money Matters session where they're going to be talking about financial aid, scholarship, and bursar's office. They have so many questions about that that they're just going to devote 45 minutes to that. And then at 10, they go into an intro to academic life session. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Renee Duncan and I do that session. And so we'll talk about that in a minute. The honor students will come back from lunch at 1.30 and register. Um, they'll meet with their academic advisors and register. That'll be after lunch. Um, the new students, that will be at 10.45 before lunch. And that will be at, at sessions two through seven. Um, okay. And so they'll go directly from academic life to academic advising. Transfer students, once again, will go back to the afternoon slot. Um, because we can't register, we can't advise and register both our new students and our transfer students at the same time. Transfer students typically, and I will say most transfer students who come to Transfer O will already have a schedule. Okay. 
um, it will be the few who don't and our academic advisors will need more time to deal with them because of course with transfers, oh, yeah. transfer equivalencies, whatever they're bringing in, trying to get them connected with the major on an advanced level, mm -hmm. trying to make sure that all of their equivalencies are counted. Um, the ones that have schedules usually they know they're going to transfer. The ones, the ones, the ones usually when a student transfers in, the transfer center will encourage them to contact their academic advisor immediately. Okay. And so typically right. we either the chair or the academic advisor will advise the student as soon as they're admitted, and they'll go ahead and register, okay. as opposed to waiting for a summer out. Okay. Transfer yeah. students need to get right into the mix. Okay. Yeah. But this does give even for a student who's transferred in. That student, for example, if they're in my academic program, would be referred to me, mm -hmm. and then we'd be able to, you know, to, to register that way. Um, the academic life session. We started this about two years ago, and it has been massively effective. Uh, Renee starts off and describes the way that the university studies requirements work with the area major and minor to create the uh, entire program. I explain the difference between an area and a major and minor which not all colleges have, and so this is important information for them to have. Yes. Um, we talk about the requirement to have an area or a major by 45 credit hours and a minor by 60 if they have a major. I explain to them that if they want an area and a minor, they can have it, and they can have a double major. If they have a double major, they don't have to have a minor, but we do give okay. them all of that information. Awesome. We uh, introduce them to RACER, just let them know what RACER is, Many of the students will have seen the racer, many of the parents will have not. Yeah. And for this session, parents and students are still together. Okay. I'll then talk about the academic advising website and what it has to say about the role of the academic advisor, that the advisor is there to advise, to help the student to get to a schedule, um, but that the student may have to make some choices and make them fast <laughs> at 10.45 when they go. Um, then we will talk about dual credit, transfer credit, AP courses, and advising and scheduling. Summer of Logistics, we will be explaining when you leave here, students, you are going to go to your academic advisors, they're going to get you a schedule, and you are not going to leave to go to lunch until you have at least 12 credit hours registered. We'll talk about 15 to finish and why they yeah. probably want to register for 15. For sure. um, and then there's a brief video they'll watch on consent to release. Um, that's also explained on the academic advising website and we do a little thing about the website itself. Okay. So before the students come to academic advising, they have a pretty good idea of what they're heading to. Um, the summer O booklet. Every student will have a summer O booklet. It will have a change of area or major. So if the student says something that says, I really, you know, I came with you because I want to be in your major, but I'm still registered over there as I'm declared, or I'm registered as psychology, and I'm with you because I want to be sociology, because you're the sociology advisor. No, you're not, but you get the <laughs> idea. Um, you can have them fill that out, and when they finish registering, they can go to the library, and at the library, they can turn in their change of major form. Most okay. faculty advisors will be in a lab um, environment with a member of the registrar's office, and sometimes they can change their major right there. Um, there will also be a list of areas, majors, and minors. There will be a how to register for classes. There's also registration 101, how to register for classes for faculty and for uh, uh, students on the academic advising website. Okay. So I recommend that academic advisors watch that before they go yeah. so that they can help their students. They will be in the lab while the students register. Okay. Um, there's testing and placement information in the booklet. There's also a scheduling worksheet, one of those grids, yeah. and I think it's the same one that you have, but I'm not sure. Yeah. And then there is a worksheet, so if your student <clears throat> had, for example, particularly for the April ones, if your student, for example, is, is in a dual credit course that doesn't finish till June, okay. right. you can say, this sheet will allow you to say, um, when you get your grade for your dual credit course, drop this course and add this course. Okay. If you make a 3, 4, or 5 on your AP world history, drop this course, add this course. Okay. You know, or um, if you make a 3 on your English AP, you know, stay in this course, you'll have an extra credit. If you make a 4 or 5, drop this okay. course, add this course. Okay. But it's a nice form to use for that information. Um, and you know, so do use that form. Uh, you know, you can just ask the student. Do you have your summer O booklet? These are all toward the back. Uh, they are within a, 
four or five pages of the back of the book. Okay. Yeah, so they're pretty right. easy to find. With the Summer O booklet, each student has a sheet that has a sticker on it with their scores and placement information. Okay. If the student needs any developmental courses, make sure that those students are in the developmental courses. If that sticker says P2S, or Pathway to Success, those students should not be with us. Those students, that, that, that's that tier four new enrollment okay. where students need to meet certain requirements before they can be fully admitted. Those students, it will say undeclared, and then it will have pre before a college name, and it will have either P2S or Pathway to Success. Those students need to be at the Lowry Center. They are supposed to be pulled out first from the uh, Kerr Center after okay. the academic life okay. session. We're working very hard to make sure they stay together because those students have very restrictive, they have to be in their developmental courses and they have to complete that program before they can be fully admitted to the university. Um, I will say uh, some advisors, some college, there's one college that just forbids cell phone use. Um, I, on the other hand, uh, if my student has a smartphone and is comfortable with it, very often I'll have them pull up their, the, uh, uh, my gate ac academics tab and the add drop classes there and then I'll have them working off their racer on one of the computers in the lab or vice versa yeah. so that they can have multiple screens yeah. um, uh, yeah. there was one summer O where the power went out and we were in a tornado warning and we were in the elevator area of faculty hall and I was like hey you have your cell phone get on my gate and so we continued to register <laughs> So, um, <laughs> so families will not be with the students at Pretty registration they doing at academic like advice. They're like off their doing something else. Okay. Yeah. And so you don't have to worry about mom, dad, and cousin Bob telling them. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, so they, they won't be with them. That's yeah. probably a good thing. Um, your students will need either an academic plan for their program or their racer because of their racer. Even if the student isn't uh, in racer in the proper major, you can use the what if feature mm -hmm. in racer yeah. and have them call up uh, your major with your program and so that they can see, you know, for example, if it were mine, it would be a Bachelor of Arts in English, yeah. uh, literature track, and then we could see what it looks like using the what if. Okay. And so I use the racer. Others prefer to have a paper academic plan a lot of the programs have their academic plans already on their websites, so they'll have the student call up the website. Um, yeah, use that what if, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. In the uh, academic life session, I will introduce them to what a CRN is. Okay. Um, what I do is say, okay, just a little sidetrack here. CRN is a five digit code number that you need in order to register, and you may get in with your advisor, and your advisor is going to start saying, what's the CRN? What's the CRN? Mm -hmm. Just so you know, when you look up a course, the number next to it is the CRN number. Gotcha. You know? yeah. And so that one, you'll have that. And so coordinate, make sure you have enough advisors and make sure that every student has a schedule. And when they are scheduled, send them to the library where they'll check out. If okay. a student doesn't check out at the library after academic advising, their schedule will get purged. Okay. So they yeah. need to check out with their summer O counselor. Um, that does not apply to transfers. Oh, it doesn't apply no, to transfers. But it does apply to the regular students. I think they tell the transfers that anyway, but it oh, doesn't yeah, apply. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As well. Prioritize with scheduling. Um, every student, every new student will be coming into a 100T transitions. We all know what our transitions class is. Mm -hmm. Schedule them for that first because for most of us, like for example, for my program, we only have. For English, we only have two sections of 100T. Okay. And so we get them scheduled for that. Then, if they have any required developmental courses, make sure they're in their developmental courses. Make sure you look at their placement scores. Make sure you look at the placement guide. Usually, your chair and dean will also be double checking and letting you know if students need to be in developmental courses. But do check and make sure of that. Then be looking at university studies courses that are particularly specific to your program. If there are prereqs, get them into that. 
if you can get them into something that a student is interested in, get the student into that, okay? Account for the credits they're bringing in from the outside to make sure that they're not taking a course they're not going to need. Yeah. And then, if need be, use Racer to check. Okay. Yeah. As we get later on in the summer, uh, very often advisors will be trying to get them into anything that they can possibly yeah. get them into. As advisors, it's best for us to be looking in advance to see what could count and trying to think strategically. Mm -hmm. Our students are going to be in more and more pressure with the new tuition model to make sure that they're using their dollars wisely. Okay. Honors program. Um, honors summer row, this was easy, but regardless, if you're using RACER to advise, honors program becomes easy because the honors program students will not have university studies, they'll have honors sequence. Okay, yeah. um, for any of the sessions two through seven, do ask at the beginning of advising, are any of you honor students? Honor students don't have to come to honor summer row. Most do, okay. but you'll end up with a few who don't. The worst thing that can happen is you get all the way through advising and you put them in a bunch of university studies courses and they say, oh, by the way, I'm in the honors program. Um, honors sequence replaces university studies. Honors program students must take one university, uh, one honor sequence course per semester until they're finished the honor sequence, and so make oh. sure that they get into an honor sequence course. Um, you can take one per semester? One per semester, okay. um, sometimes two, but uh, they do need to be in at least one, yes. Okay. Um, I've had a few of those. Yeah. Advanced placement. If they don't have their AP scores in hand, as we said, use the form in the Summer O booklet. Um, if it's a dual credit course and they're in good standing in it, you can use an override and go ahead and put them into the course that that course qualifies them for. Okay. Um, override privileges, deans, chairs, program coordinators, and some other designated people have override privileges. Uh, find the right person. Yeah. Your deans and your chairs will have lists of people and phone numbers <laughs> to try to track down the people you okay. need yeah, to get them into the, into the okay. proper courses. Transfer credit. Um, if the courses have already been evaluated, they will already be on RACER. And so RACER is okay. a great tool for that. When you look at their racer, do look at the last section on the racer. It's a section called unrestricted electives colon mm -hmm. additional hours. Mm -hmm. That is where courses that have not been plugged in, courses that have not been evaluated so that they transfer directly to fill a particular requirement, they just drop to that section. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and there is a transfer advising um, training on the advising website that I recommend if you're going to be advising transfers that you take a look at. Um, those courses may have prefixes like prefixes like TRN, GAC, MAT. They'll have a whole bunch of prefixes that don't look familiar. Right. Um, with those courses, it does not mean they cannot count. It means they haven't been evaluated. Mm -hmm. So if you see a course there that should be equivalent to one of your courses, contact the transfer center. Okay. If you see a course there that for this student should be substituted, use the course exception form. Um, at the top of the Academic Advising website, there's a registrar's, registrar forms link, and you can okay. find all the registrar forms just by going to the Academic Advising website and click on that. Yeah, yeah. So it's right there, yeah. Is there a few prefixes that just absolutely will not? Did I remember mm -hmm. hearing that? Okay, I no. there was just some, it's like, it says this. No. Oh, there, actually, there are ones that are pre-college and um, Racer Academy courses, some oh, okay. of those that only can count in certain ways. Gotcha. Um, but usually you can look at a course title and yeah. you know, see if it looks like it, mo like for example, a course might come in called the Hispanic Experience in Literature. Um, we, in the English department, we don't have a Hispanic literature course right now. We're working on it. We have a new hire who should be able to teach it. But that course is not gonna come in directly. And so we have to do a course exception and sub that course in. Okay. Most of the time you can do that, though? Most of the time we can do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so you can check with the, uh, you, you can check, you know, you can check with the department that those students are in. In your case, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. Have the students check with their advisors in the department. Okay. Yeah. Um, but make sure they look at that last section. And that's a way you can be helpful 
Because yeah. if you see courses that have subbed to that section, you can say, hey, go see your advisor and ask your advisor if this course can count toward one of your requirements. I've seen quite a bit of classes at that section. Yes. I didn't really totally understand I mean, yeah. what it was at first, but yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, you can move those around. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, on the Transfer Center website, there is a link that says Find Courses That Transfer. And oh, you yeah. can click on there, and those are <clears throat> courses that have already been evaluated. Okay. Yeah, if a course isn't there, it doesn't mean it doesn't count. Okay. It means it hasn't yet been evaluated. Right. But often, I use this a lot of times, and particularly April, summer, oh, very often I'll have students who say, I'm going to take a, a summer course yes. at WKCTC. Um, you know, what would count, yes, and we yeah. can use that tool to see what course would count. Okay, yeah. Just a few bits of advice. Um, know your program. In your case, know who to contact. Yes, okay. <laughs> uh, be, use the bulletin a lot. Yes, yeah. Yeah, use the bulletin, use websites, and you'll get used, you'll start gathering people you know in different departments. Mm -hmm. Who are your best resources? Yeah. You know, you'll start knowing which chairs are most helpful. You know, how to get to deans, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, be positive and supportive. Uh, you know, uh, uh, showing up at a full day summer O and registering for classes. Uh, this is mind blitz for a lot of these students. It comes fast. It's exciting, but some of them will be stressed out. And so, the more positive and supportive we can be. You know, okay, great, you're here, let's get you registered. This is exciting. You know, um, really goes far. Um, if you don't have answers, connect your advisees to those who do. Even if you can't give them the answer right there, say, hmm, okay, I'm going to make a note of that. Here's my card. If you don't hear from me by Tuesday, please email me. Okay. You know, um, and if they're at Summer O, they should already have their Murray State emails and encourage them to already get in the habit of using their Murray State emails because that's the only way we can do official communication. Oh, okay. you know? So you can right. set some really good habits from day one right. of Summer O. Sure. Um, I have mine using their emails, I have them using Racer, you know, uh, you know, right on, hand on. The more prepared you can be, the better, okay? Uh, prepare for challenges. You're gonna have student scores before they come to you. Um, anything you can anticipate. If you can look down the list and see these students are going to need this course, um, you know, you can already give them CRN numbers. You know, if there are five sections of Social 133 and your students are going to need that, uh, have the CRNs for those five. Gotcha. The way the registration system works, if you already know the CRN, you can just type it in That's it, right. and hit register and pop, that one's on there. And then you can keep adding classes. So I always do that with the transitions class first. I say, okay, everybody in my group, put the transitions number in. Hey, you're registered for one credit hour. Congratulations. First one. And that's, you know, and cool. so we can work from there. By the time they leave you, make sure they have a schedule. Uh, most academic units will have them print a schedule out before they go to the library. And they'll, what they'll usually do is have them print two copies, one to give to the, uh, their summer O counselor at the library and one to keep themselves. Okay. Um, checklist, connection, connect the student to the program, uh, connect the student to people. You know, make sure they have contact so when they remember something 24 hours from now, they'll know what to do with it. Make sure that they have a schedule, make sure that they've registered for classes, make sure they're in their developmental classes, and make sure that they know what to do if something has to be adjusted in their schedule. You know, for example, you're taking the AP in two weeks, okay, make sure that you, you know, fill in that your scores are going to come to Murray State, and make sure that I've filled in your summer O booklet so you know if you make that four or five that you can drop this class and add that one. Um, just a reminder, Summer O is a recruitment as well as an orientation or registration event. Um, we want to make sure they're all going to be racers in August. I have students, I, I've had students who have come and said to me, you know, I already went to Summer O at Western, but you gave me choices and I really like it here, I'm coming here. Really? Um, and so you will see students, if they applied, um, they're going to go ahead and, you know, some of them will do this. And so make sure a positive experience at Summer O, they will be here in the fall. A negative experience at Summer O, 
there's a chance they won't be. Right. And um, we need the enrollment. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, of course, that's me. Uh, you can always contact me with questions. I don't always have the answers, but I can usually figure out who to route you to. Uh, the Academic Advising website has a ton of information on it. Please do use it, and I encourage your students to use it. If you need these easy access, once again, there's Mallory LaPlante's email. And questions for RACER can always go to msu.racer at murraystate.edu. The RACER office, uh, the email is usually the best way to get them because their phone rings constantly. Um, and that's one way, good way to get in touch with them. Right. Yeah. They're very quick getting back with you. Yeah. So, questions? Yeah. yeah. Or you can too use the contact information. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's especially for me right there, yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of it, you know, it'll be, is this your, will this be your first summer? Yep. Yeah. First okay. time, first time. And, and yeah. so uh, you'll get a feel for it, and particularly on what kind of support your students need. Right. Because yeah. your support, your students should be going for uh, advising with their academic programs, yes. but you'll get a feel for what it is they need the rest of the time. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, and how you can provide that support. You know what what possibly could happen in the future that would make them even more comfortable. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah I've, I've had a lot of students just drop in, and mm -hmm. with all kinds of different situations. And yeah. They, I don't know. They, a lot of them come to us first. Yes. You know, sometimes it happens that way, but I always end up sending them to their advisor afterwards. Yeah. I'm like, always do this. But you know, that is good that there, there. it's good that they're showing up at your office yeah. though because if that means that they're aware of the services that yep. student disability services can provide for them mm -hmm. um, so that they can then take that information to their academic advisors. And an academic advisor can't ask um, about disability or All anything right. like that. Okay. If the student needs to bring that forward so that the academic advisor can then provide the support that's needed. Okay. There usually aren't accommodations that the academic advisors get. It's usually only through a student talking to us about their accommodations that we can then also provide additional support. Gotcha. Yeah, a lot of them don't mention it mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. I try to encourage them to somehow, but yeah. you know, a lot of them just don't. And just encourage them to use the services that they are entitled to. Yeah, because yeah. it does make a huge difference. It really does. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I guess that's why a lot of them come to us first. They just they're comfortable. That's so, good. Yeah. Yeah, that is a that is a good thing. Yeah, I yeah. guess it's working out okay. I've had three or four uh, last week. You know, before scheduling and stuff, and I filled out one of those worksheets, and then uh, of course tell them to go to their advisor. But I'll look at their schedule. Yeah. And sure enough, you know, they, they actually scheduled some of the stuff that we recommend. And, you know, some students want to schedule stuff they don't need. <laughs> I'm like, why well, are you taking physics when you don't need physics? <laughs> well, and, and once again, you know, you'll, you'll get used to how to spot check for those kinds of things, too, yeah. so that you can try to re-rail them when they're derailing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, it's worked out pretty well so far, yeah. yeah. Thanks, thanks for this training. It helped me out Oh, a lot. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, glad to. Yeah. I don't think I have any other... At least not today. Yeah, I'll probably email you. Email me. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. But the, you know that that's that's part of my job is to be there so that I can be emailed and help out as needed. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. And this will be on the website too. So. Yep. The I'm gonna. I'll, I'll get this up as soon as I get through. We have a. Um, awesome. College of Humanities and Fine Arts showcase at four, and then a reception at five, and then I'll get this. Yeah, up. yeah. You got nothing else going on. Yeah. No, just like everybody else. Yeah, yeah. 